episode two of the cool cast because i can't think of a better name for it but today we have a special guest footed ghost fellow halo youtube extraordinaire why don't you say hello mr ghost i uh hey, thanks for the great intro there man i really appreciate that <laughs> i think the halo extraordinaire might be you though let's just let's just start with that straight away hey you always gotta gas up the community right whenever i have a <laughs> Fellow Halo YouTuber, rather, they are they are extraordinary because they're out of the ordinary of YouTubers because we're covering Halo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that wrong, man. You got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's, we're going to do another episode of the podcast and we're going to be talking about a lot of things. You know we're going to be talking about the whole content update 29, the good stuff that's coming with it, and what that also kind of means moving forward with it. We're also going to be talking a little bit about the Halo show, so that's coming around, some of the BTB mm. playlist refreshes, and also maybe a little bit about mr ghost himself being over in australia and how it's like playing halo over there kind of interesting i should have flipped my camera upside down <laughs> just <laughs> get that real land down under the <laughs> that'd be that's a, that'd be a real real, real lore immersive right there for sure <laughs> and then yeah we'll then wrapping it all up with um, some rapid fire questions that we always finish up with everybody so Perfect. let's get right into it ask your thoughts on content update 29 what do you think about the update like the just the update itself not anything around it like the stuff that's coming with us on january 30th what are your thoughts on it all right so i think right off the get-go i gotta say who came up with the uh the name content update 29 <laughs> like they're calling it cu 29 and already like you got a bunch of halo fans being like they're not putting any name not putting any effort into the name now and you know what i kind of agree it's just a really odd odd sounding name um to be you know putting in like video thumbnails or in like posts but i just feel like yeah if they titled it something like spirit of fire or um you know something that sounded a bit more interesting i don't know i feel like the halo community wouldn't be feeling so not down but wouldn't be feeling like they've given up i know they mm -hmm. haven't i'm not saying three for three have but i just feel like cu29 is not a really uh enticing name for an update yeah it's not you, that, yeah it yeah. doesn't really uh yeah like, like i think what sketch said like it doesn't really it doesn't have a nice ring to it you know <laughs> it just yeah sounds just just <laughs> extra straightforward we're just like we're just getting it out kind of feeling when you title something like that uh it's, it. a, it's a shame after just like finally getting to that seasonality that they talked about mm. so much right we heard that for like almost like a year and a half it's just like we're striving to get there they finally get there and they're like now we're just gonna kind of update when we can kind of thing you know yeah man that's a good point there like the seasonality they reached that and now you know i think a lot of halo fans are expecting it to just uh get to the point where you know every three, three months we're getting the big season with a lot of content and that's kind of the way i was thinking as well so i was really looking forward to season six because you know I, i'm sure you've seen the leaks and i, I will, we might talk about them later on but uh, I looking forward to it. And when I saw that, you know, they were moving away from seasons, they didn't mention season six. They said, we're looking forward to see what's next for Halo Infinite. I thought something was going on there. I don't know, man, it's a, it's a tough one, but like, I'm still excited for what's coming in this content update 29. I'm still excited for it, but there's, there's a lot more I was hoping to see, uh, like at least for this year of the game. So look, we'll see what happens. But um, as, as it stands right now, I don't expect anything too big anymore going forward like in terms of sandbox and all that but i'm sure we're going to discuss that later on too yeah i would say like well for at least like the stuff i think that's coming in are definitely great changes like or great to come in like especially like that mark four oh, armor yeah. set i mean oh that, man yeah i was like if I, I kept thinking to myself like if there was any kind of armor set that would like we wanted to have come into the game it was definitely going to be like the jerome armor set like that would just Definitely. be awesome to have. I think also just like additional cross core stuff and you, know, you get the HDS kits little, being a little bit more freedom right there with like the year one uh, or season one. We call it uh, HDS kits. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that, that. that's awesome. Like, especially since I still think those are probably like the best codings that we've had for all the HDS stuff going around there too. And we'll get into like the refresh stuff a little bit later in the video, but I also kind of want to touch on a little bit, uh, obviously moving from the seasons to the operations. One thing I mm. noticed about the operations is that you can't earn credits anymore within those operations, which I thought was kind of interesting. But then you also have the ability to earn like Spartan points effectively. So I was kind of curious, like, see, like, what do you think like this cadence of operations are going to be like? And will there be some way to earn some form of in-game currency for us to, you know, buy into microtransactions that we had with the regular battle pass. Yeah, that's my hope this year. Like, you know, with Halo Infinite supposedly winding down, I'm hoping we are going to see some sort of way to earn credits, like, you know, just by playing the game. I still think the idea 
the you know the idea where you could you know complete the weekly challenges or even the ultimate weekly reward and you get the reward but also like a small portion of credits i think that's what they need to do like it pushes people to actually play the game quite a bit to get all those challenges done but then there's a really good reward at the end of that you can save up your credits buy stuff that's in the store and you know with halo infinite with 343 focusing on the next next game for halo they shouldn't really care too much about the players you know building up their credits to buy something from the store because at the end of the day if they want something cool they can play the game and get it so i think it'd be a win-win for 343 because they can just entice players to keep playing the game and uh you know it's a win-win essentially but yeah in terms of the operations going back to that i went on a bit of a tangent there in terms <laughs> of the operations i feel like yeah they they're good and bad now when i say they're good i'm saying that because you can technically complete the full pass get the 20 items for free you don't have to spend anything whereas with the operations it was ten dollars right yeah ten dollars so that's i'm okay with that because technically if you want to be a free-to-play player now and just unlock all the operation items you can do that as you said though kevin you can't get any credits so some halo players have already been talking about that and i you know it's a it's a i don't know it's a hit and miss thing because the good side we don't have to pay for the pass anymore we can get it for free, complete it without spending any money. But the negative there, we're not getting any credits to save up, buy stuff in the store, or possibly buy the next pass. So yeah. And then of course the the negative two, as you said earlier, it's 20 items, not 50. So not oh, sorry, 50, that was season five, right? A hundred was season four. So right. we are losing quite a lot of items there when you think about it. And then even more negative. We might see some of those items that would normally be in the 50 tier pass, 100 tier pass in the store. So that's the only other downside, I think. But yeah, there's a, there's, there are a few positives to it. I'm not saying it's all negative. There are a few positives. But yeah, I'm, I'm keen to hear your thoughts on that as well, actually. I'm kind of curious if these operations are going to be tied to the content updates themselves. Or if we're going to get these operations like one after the other, right? Because they're supposed to last. Mm. I think they initially said like four to six weeks, I think, for the most part, when it comes to these operations. You get the 20 yep. year pass, and then you have like the little extra item if you want to buy into it to make the pass permanent. If you know, grind out 20 tiers in Halo, if it's a little too crazy, which you got plenty of time mm. to do it. I mean, I was playing real casually for this uh, winter operation. And oh, yeah. I just finished up the pass, <laughs> even though like I've been playing, I've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare three since since I've been. I've just been really enjoying that game, trying to get better at Warzone. Yep. If the progression stays the same, wouldn't it be too crazy. And I think I was like just like having that little extra like little you know bonus thing you buy into like this Spirit of Fire operation. You get that the mm -hmm. MA is it the MA five B. The one that I think so, the okay. CE one, yeah, right. but the, the CE yeah. assault rifle, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, something, something like that, like, that's something like, yeah, okay, you already got my money, I'm sorry, but like, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna steal my, yeah. you're gonna steal my cash on that one, totally makes sense. Because, like, if you go like one after the other with these operations, I feel like that would just kind of like, I don't know, it just, like, I think you need like some downtime between each operation, like, maybe like a week, maybe two between each operation, just to kind of like finish that one up let it pass and then mm. kind of like build up the hype for the next thing. Because if you just go one after the other, then it's just kind of just like the steady line of just like, you know, pretty good live service kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, and that's It'll the one thing together. Mm. Yeah. So I want to see like what the kind of the cadence of those are going to be like. And if they're, if these operations are going to be kind of like almost like a, almost like a seasonal pass kind of thing when it comes to these content updates. What do you mean? Like what even constitutes a content update really? Like, is it like new maps? Mm. Is it gonna be like a new mode or something? Or is it just like, we need you to buy into the pass to keep the lights on kind of thing, you know? So <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's gonna be very interesting moving forward. Cause I don't think they mentioned anything about dates or like with like Cyber Showdown or Yappening too, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm. They didn't mention anything like that. So, I mean, yeah. I, oh, well, it seems like a lot of times with like the seasonal stuff, like when it comes to, like the the passes and things like that, it's like cosmetics. And I'm like, yeah, cosmetics are cool to unlock, but I mainly play the game to do cool things in the game. And yep. that's kind of my biggest concern with this year for Halo Infinite is that like uh, if things are kind of obviously starting to wind down, right? That was kind of that started back in 2023, right? With all those layoffs, like not getting campaign DLC, like that was the first big hit. Second big hit was like no narrative cutscenes for the seasons. 
And now we're losing the seasonality for content updates. So what's going to be happening this year to kind of get people excited about playing Halo? You know, you can rely on Forge, you know, but if you get to like a, I don't know, Halo 2 refueled, I guess, or something like that. Like that would be exciting. <laughs> so I'd be down. Yeah, that would absolutely. be exciting. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. Um, but that's not going to bring like the the wider crowd in. That's the only issue, you know. Um, but yeah, no, like something like that would be cool. I, I have a really, really big feeling that people three are going to be relying like purely on Forge in the Forge community this year for most of the content updates and everything we see in the game. So I think, what was his name? Um, Michael Shaw, uh, Forge Lord, that's it. Mm. I was trying to find the name. He, uh, I think he said we are going to eclipse the number of Forge maps we had in 2023 um, this year. So I would not be surprised if that's going to be the case. But in terms of dev, dev made maps, I think this one here, which was Illusion, we'll see this one, maybe another one for content update 30, <laughs> if, they keep, if they keep those names. Um, and then maybe like content update 31 towards the end of the year. Who knows? But I just think, yeah, we'll see plenty more Forge maps. That won't stop. Um, and that will be a good thing going forward. But yeah, in terms of like actual fun, interesting sandbox items, you know, I don't, I don't know. I've been told that like, not been told. I, th I think a lot of people are just thinking that that's it for the sandbox now for Halo Infinite. We aren't going to see anything new like that until the next game effectively. Um, and I really, I really hope that's not the case because as you said there, for us, you don't really just play Halo for the cosmetic side. Some people that, that that could be the case, but for us, it's more you know the gunplay, the weapons, the vehicles that you get to play with. So I don't know, man. If they if they say like that's it, we're not seeing any more vehicles or weapons for the rest of Halo Infinite's lifespan. I will be really disappointed. I I got to say that right now. No, I, I kind of agree with that, especially since with the the leaks that we've seen, right? Like everyone's seen them, right? With like the Falcon, yeah. that double barrel shotgun oh, yeah. we've seen around and stuff like that. Spoilers. It would be <laughs> it'd be a shame to not have those come into the game, you know, because it's, you know, at least from the leaks that we've seen, they look, at least like the Falcon looks pretty ready to go. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. But I, I don't think it's out of, you know, I don't think we're out of, uh, out of turn here to start talking about them just because like, they're on the internet. They haven't been taken down. Everyone that's right has seen it, you know. So, mm. like, what's going on with that? <laughs> like, we've literally we've actually seen progress made to it since we first saw it leaked, like over a year ago. You know, so like, what's going what's going on with that? You know, it's just I hope so. I like because I, I'm a big Falcon stand myself. Uh, definitely my favorite Respect, vehicle man. in Halo. You know, <laughs> I mean, I guess like Airborne Warthog. How's that not amazing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is pure Halo. That's like Halo in a vehicle. Oh so. my god, yeah. It was like the, the the team aspects, the destruction yeah. you put into it, and just like the overall fun of it. And plus, it's super fun shooting it down because you get like easy triple kills. <laughs> oh, easy man. Yeah. But yeah, actually, you mentioned about uh, the map uh, illusion coming in here with content twenty nine. And so I was kind of seeing like what are your first impressions of the map because this is definitely different than we've had other compared to other maps within the sam or within the map pool I want to say so uh, just yeah. kind of what, what are your thoughts on it like what do you think Yeah so I look a lot of people have been saying oh it looks kind of bland it's a gray UNSC map but I am pretty excited for it I can't lie it's I think sure you have the active camo hallway which is really interesting and it's unique to just this map so that's one reason to be excited but. I also like how, you know, it's going to, um, I think there's like a grav lift that goes from one side of the map to the other side of the map. And uh, yeah, I think there is one of those in Cliffhanger, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Um, but it's, this is one inside like a UNSC space. So I don't know, it's just going to be cool to bounce around the map <laughs> back mm -hmm. and forth like that. Uh, but of course, the main thing is the active camo hallway. Like, I think that's going to be really, really interesting in gameplay. And of course, you know, I think there's an Easter egg where, I mean, uh, this is pure speculation, but I've heard there's going to be an Easter egg where um, you can change the active camo hallway to an overshield hallway. Oh, I don't really? know. I, it's pure speculation, but do you know how they showed us the overshield uh, cube in the, um, I think it was in the live stream, but they also showed it in the uh, map preview today. Yeah. But it was real mm. quick. It was real quick slice of it. And apparently people were saying if you enter a code in, it will turn the hallway into an overshield hallway. Now, I, I don't know if that's going to be true. Probably won't be, but I think that would be, be really, awesome. really cool. Yeah, that would be that'd awesome be awesome. If it was. Yeah. <laughs> so that, I'm hoping that's the case. 
Yeah, that would just turn map uh, with interactivity into a whole new level right there. I mean, like oh, just yeah. going just the camo by itself is already like a really cool feature that we haven't really seen in Halo. I Man, I got like big major like elongation vibes off of it, you know, with like the long hallway oh, down the yeah. middle, you know. But like, yeah. and then being able to go into camo, you know, there's gonna be some interesting like. There's going to be some clips. There's going to be some fun clips for be. sure. I'm sure Mid Blitz is going to have a field day with that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can have a sniper with like the man cannons on there, just like flying through. Yeah. Right? He'll he'll find oh, somebody God. to snipe someone down that narrow hallway. You have like a split second oh, to shoot. While they're in camo as well. <laughs> yeah, while they're in camo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll find a way, dude. Like, I he'll, think there's like a threat him. seeker on the map too. So like that also gets a cool counter oh, to that whole thing as yeah. well. I think we first saw that when uh, Uni sh showed it off on the, the stream there. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, but so, yeah, like it seems pretty cool. Like also on the outside, um, two hallways seem like some pretty good elevation changes and different kind of pathing as well. So technically it's mm. still like a three lane map, but definitely a different style of three lane though. Definitely a good twist yeah. on it. And I think only it's only a twist that like Halo could pull off, right? Like it's this is definitely mm. like a Halo map for sure. Oh, absolutely. And that, this yeah. is kind of one of the things I brought up when I was talking about it previously with that. Uh, with a map like Illusion, it's definitely designed for social in mind. And yeah. maps like this is something that we really couldn't have at launch because they just you know had to get you know as many maps as they can out which and i think it was like nine or eight maps or something like that and they had to be designed with competitive and social in mind but now we have enough yeah. content within the game that they can you know do these more wild things of like a purely social map of just yeah let's make the center hallway camo and see what the weird stuff happens with it so i would right, jump in and play it and if that if those leaks are true or leaks or rumors or whatever you want to call it or true, speculation. it was the speculations are of uh you know <laughs> to switch over to overshield like that would be nutty <laughs> mm. hopefully it doesn't if it hopefully doesn't carry out of the hallway with overshield if that's the case because then <laughs> yeah you just have everyone walk around with the overshield the entire time and just be people just face tanking flag carriers the entire time or something that stuffed <laughs> <laughs> that would be freaking wild dude <laughs> actually i want to like, actually did mention about like the the sandbox here there was a tweet that oh, yep. recently put out talking about sam you know three for three not resting on their laurels when it comes to yes sandbox editions this was last year back in march of 23 but then you said uh i need to know if this is still the case with halo infinite the sandbox is what most halo fans care about and we've not had a new weapon slash vehicle since uh this was said by sketch and no the bandit evo doesn't count i was no. a bit ticked off to be honest uh, <laughs> I was that one. what if we don't get anything this year right i feel like the additions that they have made with the sandbox like with the repair field the crowd screen mm. count the band i'll count the bandit evo <laughs> <laughs> and then like also the bandit rifle as well that i feel like even those additions were kind of mild and nothing really that exciting yep. you know like if there really was anything that would get people like excited to jump back into play like, would there be like a weapon or a single vehicle that people would be like i gotta play this now content update i was gonna say seasons but yeah straight up the golf club halo Reach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> dude actually uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm just saying i'm just a hey, three for three here so I, I i love the plasma rifle i i've missed it so much and i thought when we saw halo infinite getting teased and stuff i was like oh yeah they're bringing it back for this game 100 percent. you know elites brutes they're bringing it back so when i didn't see it at launch i I was ready to end it all, man. I, uh, I, 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 I'll be honest. I was, yeah, I was not, not happy with that one. But uh, I would say a weapon that would bring people back. Oh, that's a tough one. I'd say a lot of Halo fans want to see the plasma rifle back. But when we think about a weapon that will, you know what, stuff. I'm not even going to make an argument for it. I'm going to say plasma rifle because of this. At this stage, whatever happens, I want it back. Just please, three four three. I'll get on my hands and knees, three four three. Please. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that because it, there's it's definitely room for that kind of weapon within the sandbox exactly. as well, because it, it definitely functions differently than like the poles carbine. And I don't think there's any other kind of like repeatable, like fully auto plasma weapon, if I remember no. correctly. If you want to count, don't unless you want to count, like, well, no, there really isn't. No, there isn't. No, there just isn't. <laughs> and so, yeah, that'd be a really great addition. Halo in 2024, man. I'm just like, what's going to be like the, what's 3 4 going to do to keep people excited thing. about the game, right? I mean, this kind of leads into our next topic I was kind of wanting to touch into was uh, the yep. refreshes that we're going to be getting, at least at the beginning of this uh, new content update. Uh, specifically, yep. we got like the, the BTB refresh coming in, right? With like Thunderhead, uh, Insolence, and uh, Obituary. I don't know if you had a chance to check those maps out at all. Have you, have you seen, have you seen those? I, 
I've seen the, the clips of them. I haven't played on them yet, unfortunately. But from what I've seen, man, they look really, really cool. So I'm keen for it. I'm excited. So yeah, because like uh, there's if there's one play one player that really needs a refresh, it's big. It's big team battle. Like absolutely. But it's understandable why it takes so long because these maps are so huge and they have so many different aspects to them that to uh, implement like a single map, you gotta do a lot of testing. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, actually, I jumped in and played a little bit of Thunderhead uh, earlier today as well, just kind of on my own. I jumped in with some bots and just kind of ran around the map and tested things out. And yep. like, there's a really cool scene, like when you're in begin the beginning spawn of the map. You spawn on top of like uh one like a huge forward structure. I don't know what they're called, but they're kind of they look like that's from the campaign kind of look. And you literally like jump off of the structure and you fall like hundreds of feet down, it feels like, to then land Jesus. onto the uh the ground to then get into the map kind of thing. It kind of gave me like uh reminiscent feels of like Damavand Peak from Battlefield 3. I don't know if you ever right. played that game I, at all. I I play Battlefield 3, but yeah. like not really to the point where is that one where you jump off like a really high yeah high place yeah. down yeah you're playing you're playing right thing? yeah you're playing rush and then like i think it's on the third bomb site right you gotta jump off like this helicopter pad and you literally parachute down to like the bottom of the map to get to the next section huh yeah it's a huge fall yeah yeah okay yeah, oh, yeah. right so like that so basically yeah they basically Maybe. that but put in the halo which okay that's cool. really cool and so but it's like that's, that's where you spawn that's i think the banshee spawns up there too as well so it's like a really cool change of pace at least a bigger sense of scale which really helps out a lot yeah. with it there are some awesome, interesting man. like invisible walls that happen with the map uh thunderhead but other than that like yeah like it's it's and plus like it's super colorful forerunner -y, ancient forerunners uh you know nature environments like it's really cool did they mention yeah. about when uh that update's coming is it coming with uh, the content update or is I, it gonna be a different time i'm actually not too sure i'm hoping it will be with the uh content update but uh, now that you mentioned it, I don't know if they ever said it'd be coming with the operation or like the update. I'm hoping, like, I mean, it's probably some way to find out, but maybe it'll be a surprise. That's what FIFA 3 like to do. Mm -hmm. So if, that, if it is going to be coming, hopefully it'll be a surprise. I'm really just hoping we're going to see like the Falcon as a complete surprise. I that's <laughs> At this stage, that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. I want to see things like that just be dropped as a pure surprise, not even a mention of it. And then we see it one day. And then you know, in a, in a launch trailer for Spirit of Fire, mm. that'd be cool. Oh yeah, for sure. And then uh, we did hear there's gonna be a bit of a refresh when it comes to squad battles. So I wanted to know, since it's been focused on squad battles, seems to be focusing on focusing on the classic maps, you know, classic BTB style kind of gameplay. Would there be yeah. a map or maps that you would love to see come back in a classic BTB form in Halo Infinite? Oh, I mean, like I think to starters, like four starters. Um, the fact that we haven't seen Blood Gulch yet is still amazing to me. I oh just my thought God. That Blood Gulch yes, Blood Gulch. Would be the yes. classic. My man yeah, over man, here. I got <laughs> <laughs> you, bro. I, I'm just thinking like that's the one That's the one that, you know, a lot of people would be like, you know what? I've not played Halo Infinite for a couple of years. Blood Gulch is here. I'm coming back to play some Blood Gulch. So that's that's what I'm thinking. Like Blood Gulch would be great. Um, from Halo 3, like I know this is one that everyone's probably spoken about, but Sand Trap. Just, I feel like that'd be a really, really simple one to remake in Halo Infinite. But I don't know, man. Like the Forges, I think they've already made several versions of Sand Trap. I don't know which one's the best one, but FIFA 3 surely can find that easily. Um, get Sand Trap in there, get Blood Gulch in there. Even if it's just those two maps, that will bring a lot of hype. Uh, what maps would you like to see as well? Like on the topic of that? I mean, you. Yeah. You brought up my 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 baby blood gulch over there. I mean, that's where, uh, where, where yeah, the boys yeah. became men that's... out there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we have, like we have seen some leaks and rumors about relic coming into the game as well, mm. and wondering if that would be like a squad bell amount to come in, which would be awesome. That work well. Yeah, that worked really well. Squad. I mean, yeah. relic's a classic, awesome map. Plus, like. Come on, like the intro of the map, right? Where like everyone jumps into the Warhog and then you start driving and then the guy who's driving trolls everybody and just drives off the map. Like that's what you do at the beginning of Relic every single that time. Bloody prick it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, there were so many times playing like Halo 2 online and then like just like jump into the Warhog, full Warhog, 
And then you, I just like, yeah, like I saw a guy, he's just driving straight. And I'm like, if he doesn't take this turn right now, I'm jumping out. And then I jump out and to see the rest of the hog just go in. And I was like, sorry, coming a mile away, you jerks. <laughs> God. I mean, that's just Halo players, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Halo always needs a little bit of griefing, right? To really yeah, it's, uh, it's part of it, get the true feels of it, right? I mean, they allowed it in, mm. in campaign co-op for a reason. But yeah, like Relic would be awesome. Blood Gold should be great. I mean, I'm trying to think right off the top of my head. Actually, I didn't really think about this beforehand. But there's just there's just so many amazing like big team battle maps. You got one? What's the the train? Uh, I've totally forgotten the name. Um, I had it before. It's the one from Halo Two where you've got the train, the train oh, trucks. Terminal. Terminal. Yes. Terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Mm. I reckon that'd be really good. And like have the train going in and out. Um, good for, definitely good for clips as well. Just getting an yeah. idea by it first. You know? I'd love to just get, you know, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I was going to say driven over the train, but. Uh, <laughs> well, but yeah, those are, yeah, those are definitely, yeah, Blood Gulch, Sand Trap. Like, I think, like, anything I say after, anything after that, oh. it's everyone's just kind of like, yeah, but the, but Blood Gulch is Sand Trap, though. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. That just, just end the conversation with those two. And we'll move on. I think I've seen <laughs> Blood, Blood Gold has been remade in Infinite Forge like how many times over? Like there's so many different versions of it. I'd say 5.6 million in the last time. Yeah. <laughs> More than actual players playing the game. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Halo show coming right around the corner here. Uh, February 8th. I'd rather not. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> But uh, I know, I know you had your you had your opinions about the show for season one. There's some shorts I saw kind of pop off a little bit from you there. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> so the we- one where <laughs> I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> where I'm reacting to it, I'm like, "Chief yeah. delivered his package." Is that one? Yeah, yeah, so Oh yes. man, I I thought that short was gonna totally bomb because for the first like a hundred days, it had only gone like a couple thousand views, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Ah, oh, yeah, no one's gonna see this." And then out of nowhere, the short just starting, started getting uh, some some traction. And I was like, why? The show's gone. It's done. I mean, the joke is terrible. We chief telling just package. I don't know. If, yeah, <laughs> people laughed at that one. But uh, yeah, bro, the show. Season one, they were, like the only good thing I can say besides the um, like the set pieces and stuff and the designs of the Spartans, the action I thought was actually excellent for, for, for the most part. There were some issues with it here and there, but... Yeah, the story was just horrific. Like, oh, so many issues with the story. And Quan, I don't remember her being in the Halo games. I've got nothing against the actress. She's Australian, so big ups, fellow Australian. <laughs> but uh, I just, yeah, I feel, I've really felt for her because, you know, there was like no, there was no clear direction for what her story was doing or like where she was going with her story. And, you know, the abuse from Halo fans online, it was crazy. Like, you mentioned the name Quan. <laughs> <laughs> it was good mate. it was good oh my god yeah the pitchforks and torches <laughs> coming out. out yeah i've got mine in the back no, no, yeah. Uh, <laughs> bro yeah i don't know like with that said though with that said i don't want to say it i don't want to jinx it i'm touching wood but uh i feel like maybe the new showrunner kind of gets halo a lot more than the other dude um even i think pablo Schreiber's come out and said lately that yeah they're kind of doing a mini reboot they're going to work harder for it to make it a lot more closer to what Halo should be. So you can kind of see that in the trailers they've posted so far. But I think for a lot of Halo fans and myself included, I'm going to wait until I see the first episode or two and really see were they bullshitting us? Is it actually better? Um, and is it more like Halo? Because yeah, at, at the end of the day, we're still seeing a bunch of photos and promotional images with Chief holding his helmet, not wearing <laughs> it, holding it. Yeah. Uh, and there's a Game of Thrones style shot where Chief's like, you know, yeah. like the throne. And I'm like, that's, I, that was I, a little cringe. I, I, I saw that why. like, yeah, okay, that's a little cringy. That was a little cringy uh, yeah, to see that. I don't know why they did that. The other photos, like where Silver Team is all together, like shooting, shooting the Covenant. That's awesome. That, mm. that like post more of those because everyone loved those and Chief had his helmet on. I was talking about this in a video because. Like, obviously, with, like, humans, right, you see the face, that's, like, how you recognize people, basically, right? You know? Yeah. And then seeing Chief without the helmet on, especially in some of the uh, promotional art, like, there was one with him, like, carrying, like, a wounded soldier or a dead soldier or whatever with his helmet off, not wearing, no nowhere in sight. Now, I'm like, it just kind of loses, like, that Halo feel. Lose, doesn't feel like yeah. that, that's Master Chief. That feels like a guy in power armor, you know? Yep, it's it, Jimmy Rings, man. That's what it is. It's Jimmy Rings, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man but yeah but like yeah this but the, the things i've been hearing about the show so far at least for the stuff i've been reading about it sounds like things are at least going in the right direction with the show it seemed like it was the wrap up the season one there was so much emphasis on it being like its own thing and we're doing our own style with halo kind yeah. of thing rather than like paying homage kind of thing and just really yeah. more just kind of like using the characters but then putting their own framework around them kind of thing which i mean obviously didn't really pan out i mean they know the feedback they definitely saw what everyone was saying about the show like they know <laughs> like they, know. They, 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 know. it did not fall on deaf ears it did not fall on deaf ears they definitely know i mean that's why yeah, they got the new showrunner you can definitely tell it's just like the tone it's definitely much yeah. you know sadder grittier being like the fall of the mm. right uh mm-hmm. it's pretty tough to have a sex scene in the middle of a war scene i don't know maybe i don't know i mean yeah, chief goes I, well in covenant lines <laughs> he, he still got to deliver that package man <laughs> that's it yeah he's gonna, he's gonna miss him <laughs> oh man but yeah like it's it's i'm still i'm looking forward to it i think it's gonna be better this coming season yep. uh at least everything yep. that we've seen so far definitely feels much more halo like than before where like yeah. and you can definitely tell like yeah the show wasn't designed for halo for the core of halo fans in mind seems like to be a general theme of 343 being you know behind the wheel kind of thing but uh oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. it seems like our yeah. course correcting back into uh what actually could be halo do you feel more optimistic with this season or do you feel like it's gonna be more of the same or just like i just have no idea no no i uh, i resonate with what you said there because it does look a lot more you know halo e I'm going, to, I'm going to use that term because, you know, that wasn't really the case in season one. Um, it all looks, I think someone, I read a quote from someone, I think it was on Reddit like two years ago or something when, when the Halo TV show was released. Um, it all, like, it looks like Halo. It's, it, do, it doesn't sound like Halo because they didn't have Halo music. It had the feel of Halo for the most part, but it just, it just wasn't Halo at all. Um, I, I, the way he did it was a lot better than that. I, I don't even know if I made sense with what I just said there. Um, <laughs> But essentially, like for this season, I have a bit more faith. I'm a bit more excited for it, um, just because. Yeah, the new showrunner. I think he did Fear the Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. The most, I liked that series up until like season three. Um, so it's if it's got that tone where you know it's a bit more brutal, um, less you know less sex, less romance, then that would be great. Um, because yeah, the guy who the guy who recommended sex and romance in the Halo show from the master chief of all people, the person that like people would look up to as a role model and yikes, just get that guy away from, from anything to do with a game like Halo because yeah, but no, overall, I mean, I am excited for this new season, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just don't want to jinx anything too much, you know, especially since uh, season one, I know like one of the showrunners, uh, this previous show that they were kind of known for was much more of a drama show a show called like I think it was Lone Star I think it was like a basically like just like a drama show based in Texas kind of thing but that it's good to hear that you have a guy like from from Fear of the Walking Dead right that's definitely much more grabbing material from like comic books and much more different type of storytelling for sure <laughs> when that's it comes it, to that yeah. with like and I think that's much more even though not exactly what Halo is, Halo has a little bit of aspect of it. We'll talk about the flood, but I don't know if that'll be happening with season two, maybe. You never know. He he's like, Hey, I like zombies, you know. <laughs> hey, boy, well, he might be the perfect guy for that then. Yeah, exactly, right? Maybe I just spoiled it, I don't know. But uh hey, it's like yeah, it seems we, like the, the inside of the <laughs> <laughs> But it does seem like the uh the right type of genre to grab uh, showrunners from it like it's and also like you know, Pablo Trapper also stated that he'll he'll stake his uh his reputation on season two I here. saw that yeah yeah he, he's done some great stuff you know and mm. put your reputation as an actor on the Halo show oh it might be a big thing saying that it actually is improved but again let's just come to wait and see I'm sure you and I will both do our review <laughs> videos <laughs> yeah man I'll be I'll be keen to see what you think as well but uh yeah I don't know man we'll see we'll see how it goes I think like just to touch on that last little thing with Pablo Schreiber, um, I think he's actually a really good actor. I've got nothing against him. I think he's a solid actor. I still to this day, like he's built for Chief, built perfectly from the Master Chief. I just don't think he has the the face and look of the Master Chief. I don't know if you got that same thing from season one, but you know his hair, you know the way he had like the fade and everything, uh, the stash. Um, just to me, that's not really how I pictured Master Chief. But you know what? At the end of the day, if this, if if he actually just right and true about season two, 
then I will eat my words about him as Master Chief. Uh, do you feel with him showing his face at all within the show is okay? Or do you want to just helmet on 24-7? Uh, or do you think that him showing his face at all within the show is okay? We've got to be really realistic here because the Spartans, they would you know have times where they're not in the armor. I'm not just talking about the showers. <laughs> um, I think for a Halo TV show, having him not wearing the helmet occasionally would be okay. But I don't like the way they did it in season one to the point where they took the helmet off, they took the suit off, they took the rest of his armor off, and then he's naked. <laughs> that's, that's that's not really the, yeah, the direction. Can't get much more. They, they later took everything off. There, were, there was yeah, nothing. Yeah, they made some incisions. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they even went in. Yeah, they went in. <laughs> they went, they went in. <laughs> <laughs> I think for now, it's just going to be up from here, I hope. Um, but yeah. For Halo, I'm okay with him taking the helmet off like here and there, but I want to see the Master Chief, for the most part, rocking that helmet. Otherwise, what do you got a helmet there for, man? You know? Yeah, uh, because like same, I'm like, I'm, I'm I'm okay with him showing his face within the show. I think with I think how they did it within season one, the reveal of it was actually it made sense. That's actually kind of how I figured it would it was, was going to happen. But I, mean, I just feel like doing it episode one was it was just kind of rushed. I think yeah. that the reasoning behind it made sense. It's just like do it in episode one. It was just like I don't know. That, that had to be at least a mid-season reveal, you know, kind of yeah, kind of keep yep. people interested. And so then you can just focus on the story elements when it comes to the finale. But hey, you know, like I said, I like we're like like Pablo said, like uh, Pablo said, uh, you know, he he doesn't write the scripts; he just acts them, right? Like I I don't write I don't write scripts. I just point. I just watch him play the games for less. 20 years but anyways <laughs> so i kind of want to touch on a little bit about uh your experience uh as an australian halo player because i feel like it's a little more unique than your typical halo players which i think vast majority are based in the united states continental us even yeah. so i want to kind of touch on what is like your the gameplay experience of you playing in australia and also like what is the community experience of halo in australia so i'd say all right i'll start with the the actual like gameplay experience. So for the most part, um, let's just say Halo Infinite for now. For Halo Infinite's lifespan, most of the games I've played on have been 200 plus ping for the most part. Um, there are a good portion of games where if I'm playing in the evening here and there's a lot of other Aussies on, I'll get, you know, like a 10 ping game, six ping even. And that's like, you know, that's like a drug. You got to get on that real quick because you're not going to have that again. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's you know when you really get a good grasp of the gameplay but with halo infinite i think even on the 200 ping games it still wasn't like horrifically bad um i think for me i had a lot of like especially especially for the first year um it was pretty solid to the point where i wasn't really experiencing desync or that sort of stuff like i, I sure you remember like in the first year of halo infinite there was so many so many outcries about desync and whatnot uh, and yeah, I was like on 200 ping. I'm like, am I supposed to be experiencing this as well? Um, but yeah, so that was the gameplay. But in terms of like nowadays, it can be a little bit rough because, you know, there's a, little, a lot less players playing the game. But still, if I search in the evenings, I should still get um, decent ping most of the time. Even if it's like 100, 150, I'll definitely take that. Um, like I think for me, 100 ping, if I got 100 ping consistently, I'd be very happy. Like I'd be really happy with that. Um, I don't like. I feel like to some Americans they'll be like, "That's crazy, that's crazy." Um, but yeah, I I would take that. Uh, and then the other question was the like experience as an Australian player. Uh, experience as in like uh, like the community around it. Like, do you interact with community. many Halo fans like in person yeah. or in line or like? Is there like Ooh. is there like a sense of a community there in Australia? Um, I always see like the occasional Halo comment from a. From Aussie, and that makes me proud. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm a big ups fan. Um, I, you've got like Nick Blitz, who's like leading the charge for the for the Aussies, you know, and he's been killing it. Like Remy, uh, I think when you think about, I mean, even like Halo, Halo content creators, streamers, all that sort of stuff. I feel like you know, Nick Blitz is the dude who, yeah, he's like he's repping us hard. Um, so yeah, also an extension, you have the competitive Australian community. So. Uh, I know a lot of the guys there, not like personally, but I've spoken to them here and there. Um, we've had some of them like Barcode come through and like, I, I'm sure you've seen Barcode play. Mm. Insanely talented Halo player. Um, and yeah, really good dude. But yeah, those guys, 
they've been like grinding on the game like crazy. Um, there's a lot of competitive Halo players who, you know, it's, it's a lot harder for, as you talk about the ping, it's a lot harder for competitive Halo players to kind of make their stamp on the, on the pro scene, so to speak. Barco did it really well, uh, but it was still very tough for him to get in there, um, you know, because he had to verse American players on high ping, move to America, really commit to it. Um, but yeah, from that from that side, yeah, I, I like it, it is pretty tough to be a competitive player here in Australia. But there is there is plenty of communities for that. So if there's any Australians watching this, um, you know, you can still do that because we've seen it in the past, thanks to like barcodes to do so all those guys. Uh, and also, like, I think Ogre, Ogre 2, I think lives in Australia right now, or Ogre 1, mm -hmm. one of them. Um, so, yeah, there, there are ways to do it. And I, I always do see, like, you know, the Aussie community um, in regards to Halo. Like, there are a good portion of them, but, of course, like, nothing compared to, you know, the guys in the United States. But I see them. So would you say that something like uh, like server selection that has been a uh, topic has been brought up, would that be something that you think would actually help out with the online experience in Australia? I think so. I think so. Just at this stage, anything like that will help. Maybe with Halo Infinite, I don't want to say it's too far gone, but I think like at least for the next Halo game that releases, let's say hopefully 2025, 2026, I don't know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's going to be soon, sometime soon. Uh, I would love to see that stuff from the get-go. So Australian players, like even players in Asia, because um, I have seen, you know, a lot of comments from people who live in Asia and they have very similar experiences to people like me in Australia. Um, so yeah, a service selector, um, that would go a long way, I mm. reckon. Do you, do you connect a lot of people like mainly in the US or do you connect like, I don't know, like Indonesia or something like that as well? Or uh, Mainly US actually. Yeah, yeah. US, because um, I'll be hearing people in the mic sometimes. And I mean, if I see it over 200 ping or like 180, 150 ping, usually it's American server. Um, yeah, well, like that's the case uh, for most of the games. Man, I just find that crazy. You can't just find like 700 people in Australia <laughs> playing Halo Infinite at the same time. I just find uh, that crazy. It, sometimes, man, like sometimes, or that's why the wait time. So if I have the thing set to local, I might be searching for like three minutes, four minutes. Mm -hmm. um, where if I have it to expanded, I usually find games like really quickly, unless it's unless it's ranked. Like ranked is really really hard to find. And I'm what so what I do or what I did in the past is I'd be watching a Netflix series while I'm just waiting. Oh, found a game. Headset off. Other headset on. <laughs> We're going. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also going to want to touch on since like we did started off the episode here uh, that you are a YouTuber. And you kind of find yourself a bit into like the the news and info niche uh, side of things. I was kind of curious like what kind of led you into that style of content well that's a that's an interesting one so uh to go back to the, the roots of it i tried doing halo like youtube in early halo 5 because you know i was like you know what i'm gonna give this a stab didn't do too well at all <laughs> i ended up you know losing a bit of a passion and drive for it because you know halo 5 it was fun but wasn't really my my forte so to speak for halo just it was a bit too fast and i felt like i had to you know sit forward and you know really get my head into the game to play it whereas you didn't have to do that with the other halos um so yeah kind of stopped doing that then then i'd say come 2020 the lead up to halo infinite or even like 2019 um no 2020 2020 is when i kind of started doing it like you know a bit more effort um i noticed sean w and i spoke to him and i this like we've not heard sean in a long time so <laughs> it's, it's a bit sad saying his name like that but Dude is actually killing it right now. I don't know if you've seen. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's cooking. So, yeah, great. Uh, good on him. Fair play to him. He's, he's cooking. Uh, but, yeah, Sean was, like, one of my first like, inspirations for, you know, um, the type of content that I do now. Also, you were as well. Like, the content you did. Like, you were obviously smaller back then as well because <laughs> Sean was too. Everyone was smaller. Yeah. Um, even, like, Uber Nick, Hidden Xperia. Yeah. Um, even like Mip Blitz, I think was a lot smaller than too. He was maybe like 40K subs, 50K subs. And then he just like, Pfft. oh yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, there was a lot of people that I was like, you know what? I want to give this a, a, a red hot go. And yeah, it took a while until I'd say, I didn't really like meet anyone or like you or Sean or those guys until I'd say like six months before Halo Infinite's launch. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Um, 
we didn't really have many discussions and stuff like all the Halo content creators, but I was maybe like 3,000 subs and I was like, you know what? I like this a lot. I'm going to really just try my best to to grow with this game's launch. So when Halo Infinite launched, um, there was a video that I made uh, about, actually there was some microtransactions because I was a bit pissed off about that. I mean, everyone was pissed off about that, but there was one that I made and I didn't expect it to do well because I was kind of just raging about the microtransactions, so to speak. And it got over 100,000 100, views in it in like a day. Oh, wow. And that was crazy to me. That was the first, that was like a big first thing of it, you know, any type of growth like that. Uh, so when that happened, I think that's where some people, you know, they saw me, they're like, hey, I like what you do. I'll kind of stick on to see what you do going forward. But yeah, I think honestly from Halo Infinite's launch, I've just been kind of like trudging along, trudging along there. Um, I don't really, let's see. Uh, the news is such an interesting thing because I, I don't want to be like purely known for that, so mm-hmm. to speak. Um, but it's kind of the den I've pushed myself into, like the hole I put myself in. Um, I love doing it. I love doing it. I also love talking about like law. So what I'm trying to do re- like lately, I don't, you, I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm trying to do these like minute, 60 second like law bits or shorts. Um about like random stuff in Halo that's happened in the past. So yeah, some of them do well, some of them crash and burn. So <laughs> it just, it totally, I, I still don't even know the short algorithm. I still don't know what to do, how to do yeah, it. Yeah, just, it's its own weird thing. Like it's I, its own I, I thing. Someone's, it too, but it's like, yeah, yeah, someone's at YouTube being like, yeah, send that one up. Drop it, send it up, drop it in terms of the algorithm. Okay, yeah. yeah, like there's so many times where I like I'll pose a short that's like a minute long and had like a 45 second watch. I'm like, this this killed, this did great. And it's like yeah. 2,000 views. And then it's like just dies. Boom. And I'm like, but, but, I, uh, okay. I, <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea, man. It's seriously like even I look at I'll look at things like reach, um, where they'll like you know where you can see if they view the short or flick off the short. There'll be ones where it's like 65% they view. 35% they click off and I'm like, ah, well, that's crap. It's not going to do too well. Or like, it's decent, but it's not going to do too well. And then that one will kill it. And then there's mm-hmm. one where it's been like 88% will view and 12% will click off and it's 2000 views <laughs> still yeah. two years later. I'm just kind of banking. Eventually YouTube will find some way to kind of just like meld those two viewers together. Cause it seems like short form viewers like their short form. Yeah. Long form, like their long form, but they white, they might cross over the short form, but it's just like, it's not really, you don't get very many short form people coming over to the long form stuff. That's right. Like, yeah, I guess. I feel like there's going to be some, YouTube's got to figure out some way about that, about that because clearly they like Halo stuff. Why not watch our exactly. long form stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. If they keep coming back, there's a reason they're coming back. And mm. yeah, I just think with that, right? Like, if you, um, like, just even just talking about shorts, if you just create a channel purely off shorts, I think even if you get to like 100,000 subs, you're still not going to have that like base that you would if you were doing like long form content. I think you have to do either you have to do both or you just purely do long form content because yeah, you can't, oh, I'm not saying you can't, there are people who do, but I just think it's so crucial to do the long form content too. Probably is the primary thing you do, the primary thing you do. Um, because yeah, that's really where you'll really get more of your base that will come back constantly want to talk to you and engage with you on like a really regular basis i guess so to speak mm. but like i'm not saying you can't get that with shorts i think there are people that do that with shorts just fine but it's definitely the way to go about doing because like yeah short form people just kind of just keep swiping you know and then they I might mean, they might subscribe yeah. but most people usually a lot usually if you watch the whole short that your algorithm recognizes you like their stuff so they'll feature your stuff their stuff again from a different video and so you don't really yeah. even need to bother subscribing, which I would say I would say subscribing has lost its importance over the last couple of years, especially with the improvements of Agreed. the shorts algorithm. But it's still definitely like you said, like you need to build up a community or at least a returning audience in some capacity to where you can like have some form of momentum where it's like not every not every video is like its own individual thing where it could be like that's ten it. views and maybe or maybe fifty thousand views. You know, it's just. <laughs> That's why you need that. The fight uh, fluctuates so yeah, much. The, the less, fluctu- <laughs> less fluctuations and more of a steady base, like you were mentioning, for sure. But it's the kind of same question <laughs> I asked ask BBK Dragon, and then kind of like the standard questions I, yep. I ask people over at the HCS event here in Seattle. And I want to get your right. uh, opinions on these as well. So the first question I want to start off with is, 
first Halo game that you played? All right, so yeah, Halo, come out of all for my brother, but I don't, I don't really concentrate it as playing because I uh, was more just watching him play and I'd flick a few of the con like the controls here and there. Um, I'd say the first Halo game that I properly like was engaging with and wanted to play over and over again, Halo 2. Um, but yeah, if we're saying like the first one I played, it has to be Halo CE, but I just, I couldn't get past 343 Guilty Spark because that shit used to give me nightmares. <laughs> Uh, like, like big time. <laughs> I, I would leave the room when my brother got. Oh my that gosh! Much. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. And that was that was last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, well, how old were you then? You're not. You're you're pretty uh, young. You're uh, long looking uh, chap. <laughs> I, I think so. I'm yeah. I'm 23. So like yeah. I was maybe like four, you just got you just got three. out of the cradle and you started four. playing Halo. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because my brother, my brother, because um, yeah, he's a, several years older than me. He. Um, he had it and we we're just, I think what, well, I wasn't at school or I think I got back in like preschool or something. Like, I, seriously, <laughs> like I was not holding the controller for more than like five minutes because, you know, they were worried I'd probably break it or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd be watching him play on the big TV or like the, the squid. When I say big, you know, the ones that have the big goddamn fat ends on the, oh, side yeah. or, mm. on the back of it. Yeah. The big old CRV, uh, CRTVs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was it. That was, I, I still have like really good memories of that though. So yeah, I mean, I I was like really, really small, but fuck, man, those are good times. And then Halo did, Two, of course, yeah. Did you have to play on that that big Duke controller, with like with did your you, little hands? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like couldn't even hold it properly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that thing was even big, but, uh, like my hands. I'm six foot four. Like I got big hands, and I'm like a tall dude. But like even now, mm. I'm like this is kind of big. <laughs> Bro, you know, I, I saw one of the shorts uh, of yours lately. I know this is going off rapid fire thing. But I saw it, saw it in shorts where you were talking to, uh, I think, Luke and a bunch of other Halo YouTubers and mm. content creators. Bro, I was like, man, you are tall. <laughs> you, brother, you are tall. I'm like 5'10". So, oh, yeah? I mean, I'm hoping I'll meet you in person soon, man, mm. uh, for like a Halo event something later this year. If you're going to um, talk Seattle but, in October, I'm just saying. I'll be I, there for sure. <laughs> is that the, that's Worlds, yeah? Yeah, that's it's Worlds. Worlds. Yeah, okay. If you want to go to one, that would be the one to go to. That's it, yeah. I think mm. I'm going to really really push for that one uh yeah in october but yeah that's where i'll see you man that's where i'll see you see it was definitely my first one as well i remember like i remember playing it like in december because i got the xbox it was like a christmas gift and my brother and i would just split screen the the campaign a bunch of times and then and then just like the game became super popular and then we just used to just system like with a bunch of my neighborhood friends we just played blood gold oh, ctf nice. all night long like that was the only oh. map we played We'd play like Hang Him High to kind of just mix it up a little bit. We'd just go back to CTF like yeah. Uh Next questionnaire, favorite Halo character? Uh, this may be controversial, but uh, the Arbiter. Got to be the Arbiter. Just, uh, I miss him. I want him back. <laughs> Three for three, please. Are you saying that as, as sarcastically, controversially, like your favorite character being yeah, Arbiter? Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, Everybody's yeah, like, yeah, everyone yeah, loves yeah. Arbiter. What are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, why, why I, should, I should have had a bit more uh, like an inflection of my voice there. I, just, I, said it as, I said it as pure, as a pure thing, as a pure statement. But uh, yeah, no. Keith David, like, I lo you know, his voice is just so goddamn good. Yeah, I want to hear it back in Halo, man. I feel, I feel like there's you know, next Halo game, got to be room for him. You know, have Chief there, absolutely, but have the Arbiter there in his classic Halo 2, Halo 3 armor. I mean, even in the Halo 5 armor, the Kaiden armor, I think it is. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Get him back. What is your favorite Halo weapon of all time? All right, so we did say this a few times in the uh, in the video, but uh, the plasma rifle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the plasma rifle. Is it because it looks like two birds are like stacked together, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's, that's the reason, man. That's why I loved it, yeah. Um, <laughs> also, like if I if I was to choose a plasma rifle to come back, it'd have to be the CE one with the stun effect. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'd be looking for. Favorite Halo game mode? Uh, so for me, I'd have to say like infection overall, but in particular, Halo Reach, Living Dead, Infection. I'm sure. I'm assuming you probably played Halo Infinite's Infection. Then, how would you compare it? Yeah, to, yeah. For two of those, uh, it's it, it's a good one. Does it have the same like vibe because of the uh, we're missing the pump pump mm. action shotgun? I think it's still fun. It's still good. Um, I reckon I prefer it more than Halo Fives, but I'd like to see a more classic version of Infection come to Halo Infinite, where it's just the shotgun and the sidekick. And that's it. Like you, you, you can't pick up other weapons. You can't get over shields or power ups it's just go hide try survive that's it i think and yeah and also like forget the ammo refills forget that just make it pure 
Go try survive. Not about, you know, just refilling your ammo every five seconds, just killing a bunch of zombies. I mean, you can do that. That's the peak for infection. That I would love alpha zombies. I would love to see the, um, I don't know what the term, the, the what was called, but I remember it was kind of popular back in Halo 5. I think it was also in Reach a little bit, but it was like the one where the style of map where you have to kind of progress through the map in different sections. I know Ooh, it was in Halo yeah. 5's matchmaking for infection. That one I really liked. That was uh, good. That one was good. Because I remember like the one map in particular had like this one really long hallway and they had these doors that would just close the slowest closing doors possible. And you saw just zombies like you know, zooming in for slicing people up and stuff like that. It was just like, I love those like little tense moments like that were just so much more engaging and more fun than just kind of, I don't know, kind of just standing there the and just shooting. Because it kind of reminded me a lot of like back when I played zombies back in Halo 2. Uh, we had to do like the honor system, right? Yeah, you switch sides. Yeah. Yeah, we basically we always play on on foundation, and then we would just take all like the different like movable objects and like one of the four rooms, and just kind of melee it a bunch of times to kind of create like a little bit of a barrier. And then oh, we just yeah, tell, yeah. and then over voice chat, we just tell the zombies like, okay, now go. And so then you <laughs> you see them like trying to get in, like trying to crawl through and like breaking things down. Yeah, that's also one bit about Halo Infinite Infection where I just wish they did a lot more. A lot more with it because mm. it feels like you know we waited so long like we waited so long <laughs> for infection it was a ridiculous ridiculous amount of time we waited for it and it wasn't anything crazy you know i i, I still think there was no reason that infection did not release besides launch but at, at least in 2022 like mm. there's no reason that didn't come when we talk about infection like for me yeah halo reach was my pure favorite because i just played the absolute out of that yeah the, the, as you said that the the progressive infection modes and maps were fun but mm. that was probably the only thing i really liked from it so to speak uh last question here the most important one uh what is your favorite halo game <sighs> i'm gonna be, be a real basic guy here because i feel like this is everybody's answer um i just think it has to be halo 3 it's the campaign that i probably okay. spent the most time in my man yeah yeah <laughs> I, yeah, man, I, I, I honestly, I don't even know if it needs an explanation. Just Halo 3. Mm -hmm. Halo 3. Yeah. You just get like, it. You get it. The campaign <laughs> was perfection. Multiplayer was great. Like, yeah, the battle rifle could use a little love, but just bump that damage up 10, an extra 10% and you're fine. You know? And you're golden, bro. Yeah, yeah. exactly. One thing I always thought was really interesting uh, was the how they did the ending of Halo 3. So many times, because like basically it faked a character death, which usually I hate within storytelling. I used to get flashbacks of like The Last Jedi and I'm just like, because it was like that happened, like, that happened like six times over in that movie. I think in Halo 3, they actually did it right with that one because with the storytelling, like the ending of the trilogy, right, kind of thing. Some people think like the, the hero's death is needed for those kind of ending of the story, right? But I think they did a really great job with that one of like giving you that same feeling of like, wow, Master Chief died. He, you know, yeah. but he's, he saved the day and yeah, everything else like that. But then I'm sure you also want people like that wanted him to live and turns out he does live, but you, it didn't feel like you got cheated out of that emotion kind of thing. The ending of Halo 3, I feel like it's just so masterfully done. At least the campaign mm -hmm. side of things. Like, yeah, it just get, it gives you both feelings of like him dying and him surviving, but then also not, you know, taken away from either one. I fully agree, man. Yeah. <laughs> and that, the were it so easy, that still like resonates oh to this day. So <laughs> good. I, yeah, hey, I recently hey. posted a, uh, a tweet saying, like, was it like the, uh, was it when that line from Halo Infinite saying that uh, the missions always change, they always do kind uh, of thing? And I was like, this yep. has got to be like one of the greatest lines of all time in Halo. And then someone mm -hmm. said, uh where it's so easy i'm like oh that that might be the best one in my opinion actually. that might be the best <laughs> yeah like yeah you got like i need a weapon or whatever like yeah yeah that's a good one mm -hmm. but like where it's so easy it's just there's so much more art behind that one you know yeah yeah just, <sighs> i just think of the arbiter's voice just every time just i mean there's so many awesome things about halo 3's ending but yeah that were it so easy as they look to the look into the distance man Pure peak, just gaming won't, won't ever be like that ever again. <laughs> oh, I still remember mid, the midnight release of Halo 3. I was in college at the time. I remember like waiting outside, like in the cold, because it was like out in the eastern Washington. So it was like 20 degrees out mm -hmm. or something like that. Finally getting home to play it. And my roommate just thought I was just, like the biggest nerd. <laughs> Cause I was just like, I've been waiting for this game for so long. And like, I just like, mm -hmm. I looked into every bit of marketing information, teaser trailers, whatever uh, I could on that game. And when it finally came out, I, like I sat down and started playing it. I was like just smiling ear to ear, being able to finally play it. My friend like took a picture of me playing because he's like, this guy is such a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the guy, I don't know. Do you still talk to that guy? The guy who did that? 
the, the um, I think I'm still friends with him on Facebook, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a hard oh, minute. Last my channel. Okay, with him. I was about to say, well, screw that guy, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he didn't oh, know what man. he was missing out on, man. He didn't know what he was missing out on. Yeah, we talked about yep. the content update 29. We talked about sandbox stuff, what to look forward to this year with Halo. Mm. A little bit of the YouTube stuff, a little bit of the community stuff, and the you know a little bit of uh, personal preferences, Pre- emphasis Good on the sure. personal preferences. There, <laughs> I've seen yeah. people get a little heated in the comments. They're like, "You say your favorite Halo is not like two or three, and people are like, "One of my shorts that has like four hundred thousand views on it, they get comments on it every day, going like, how could they say Halo Reach?'" I'm like, uh, "It's a good game, man." <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair play to anyone who likes and prefers Halo Reach. You know, yeah. it, it is. It's an awesome game. I like yeah. to say that, but it's uh, an awesome game. I mean, Red Gear might be yeah. wrong, but you know, he's it's his choice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, Mister Ghost, awesome. thank you so much for coming by on to I guess we call it the podcast now. And uh, oh, awesome, man. appreciate all you Thanks do for, for me, bro. Yeah, yeah, appreciate all you do for the Halo community. Yeah, they're keeping us all informed. I mean, there's sometimes like I see you post a video, I'm like. Wait, I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's happened, uh, wow, well, that's uh, one, one in a million, bro. Hey, and same to you, man. I always love watching your stuff as well. Uh, oh, I appreciate uh, yeah. it. Thank you, man, so much. But yeah, uh, I think other than that, that's uh, the end of the show, really. So thank everyone in the chat who's watching. Make sure to tap like, subscribe. Tap like and subscribe on this guy's videos as well. Link will be in the pinned comment oh, in the description of the video as well. Thanks, bro. Any parting words for the... Uh, for the for the community, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. I see you. Twenty dollars gonna go. Let's just let's yeah. see. That's gonna go. Mm. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I had a great I had a great time talking to you. Yeah. Um, hopefully, do this again in the future. If Halo Infinite's cooking, if it's doing well, or not, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe when we hear like that, there's no more content updates coming. Then we'll we'll you know we'll when we're back that, for this when that deadline comes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks all for watching. Catch you all next time. Peace out. Right, awesome. See you guys.